Okay, ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the posting of colors? Color guard, post, colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing while Michalina Cairo, Administrative Assistant of the Addison Police Department, performs our national anthem and Gonzalo Reyes from Indian Trail Junior High School leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Present our Oh, say can you see early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that song Spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shoulder, arm. Mark time, mark. Counter, mark. Oh, 
Mark on. Mark. Hunter. Mark. Thank you very much. What I would like to do now is introduce our, uh, the Addison Police Department Chaplain, Pastor Bob Tetrick from Messiah Baptist Church for our opening prayer. To start my prayer this morning, I would first like to read Psalm 23 by a king that understood the gravity of facing danger every day. Psalm 23 is probably one of the best known psalms, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me in the quiet pastures. He renews my life. He leads me along the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Only goodness and mercy should follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. You are a God that understands the trials and tribulations that we face. Your own son died on the cross. Father, as King David said so well, we go through dark valleys and these men and women that protect us every day understand that more than anyone else. Go through the valley of the shadow of death. Whenever they come in, put on that uniform, they put on their gun, they understand that this could be the day. I thank you for the hero heroism that they show the duty that they give tirelessly, the sacrifices of themselves and sometimes of their families. I pray that you would bless the proceedings this morning, that we would honor those that have gone and paid the full price for our safety. Thank you for this day, that you would bless it in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Bob. I'm gonna introduce uh, some of the people up front here so everyone uh, knows who attended. And I'll start on my far left there, Sergeant Stefan Baez from the Addison Police Department, Pastor Bob Tetrick, uh, Charles Baxa, Chief Don Markowski from the Addison Fire Department, and, and uh, Charlie's also from the Addison Fire Department, if you couldn't tell. Our Mayor, Mayor Rich Veenstra, and then to my right, Deputy Chief Brian Goss, Commander John Moffat, Officer Deanna Merrill from the McHenry County Sheriff's Office, Kathy Bernard, uh, Sergeant Ellis from the McHenry County Sheriff's Office, Commander Roy Selvick, and Sergeant Brian Lindstrom. Oh, please have a seat. You're waiting for me to tell you to sit down? <laughs> Surprised you were that patient with me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending the 15th annual Police Officer Memorial Service at the Village of Addison. The men and women in law enforcement, uh, the men and women here in this rotunda this morning, we deeply appreciate your support. Since the first known officer, since the first known officer's death in 1791, more than 20,000 officers have been killed in the line of duty in states and towns across the entire country. They were black, white, Hispanic, Asian American, gay, straight, celebrated, and unknown. Right now, every single one of them is in our thoughts. This morning, we bring their spirit here, right into this rotunda, so that we can mourn them so deeply. I feel a, a bit out of place today. A lot has changed since I first became a police officer. Back in the day, things were, things were considered respectful, admirable, dutiful, polite, courteous, um, but all those things have lost their meaning today in today's society. 
And things that we thought were completely inconceivable is now seen firmly established and accepted in and around our country. You never talked back to a police officer in the past. You never picked a fight with a police officer. And you never shot at or intentionally assassinated a police officer. It seems to me that the media in Washington has helped promote that attack on law enforcement. So in a sense, I feel a bit out of place doing this presentation this morning. I cannot understand why we continue to see and hear that some young police officer who just wanted to do his job the best that he could, or help someone, or rush to another person's aid, is killed in the line of duty. Now having said that, I'm also pretty humbled to stand here and tell you about the sacrifices that police officers and their families have made across our country, including our own state. Arguably, the most heartbreaking part of Police Officer Memorial Week is seeing the families of the slain officers file in and participate in the annual memorial in Washington, D.C. We are going to hear from a couple of those survivors this morning. Mrs. Bernard, would you please stand and be recognized? One of our survivors' family members. And another family member, so to speak, uh, Deanna and Sergeant Ellis, would you please uh, stand and be recognized? You'll hear uh, from them later on. Thank you very much. This year, 252 police officers' names have been added to the National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial. 252 names were added. 123 of those officers were killed in a line of duty during calendar year 2015. So 123 were killed last year. There are another 129 names <clears throat> who will be added to the wall as a result of dying from incidents that occurred in prior years. Like the police officers who responded to 9-11, who since retired, but they carried the pearls of death as a result of selfishly entering the crime scene to help others and subsequently succumbing to death from the disease that they carried away from that crime scene. So that's part of the 129. They'll be added to the wall. And ladies and gentlemen, things do not appear like they are getting any better. In fact, at the end of April 2016, end of April 2016, 17 police officers have been killed by firearms in the line of duty compared to eight officers at the end of April in 2015. So it's more than doubled. There are roughly 59,000 assaults on police officers each year. About 50 officers a year are killed in criminal incidents. In analyzing police ambushes, because that's uh, become uh, a thing now across the country, that's where an officer is suddenly attacked without you know, provocation, it has been found that the average ambushed officer is a 38-year-old male with 11 years on the job. It's too young to die. And like I mentioned earlier, firearms-related fatali fatalities for law enforcement officers are up tremendously in 2016. As you look at the names of those scrolling on the screen, I urge everyone to take a moment to reflect upon the duties, obligations, and potential dangers inherent to the law enforcement profession and to the women, men and women of law enforcement. These men and women put their lives on the line, put their lives on the line for us every day to ensure our safety, and we must stand in support of law enforcement. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to please stand side by side with police officers and support them as the growing list of issues they are coming under attack for continues to grow. The issues reach each end of the spectrum, for sure, and we just ask you to please support law enforcement. At this time, what I would like to do is introduce Officer Doug Gertz from the Addison Police Department. Doug? Good morning. We reached out to the Ardmore School and asked them to um, give us two fifth graders that could do an essay on why police officers are important. Could I have Michelle Bettencourt come up, please? Michelle, you 
We all know that police officers help our community. Police officers make feel safe at the library, store, or even movie theaters. They all do their jobs, and some people may think, why are police officers everywhere? Sometimes people think police officers care a lot of people, but they just want people to be safe and comfortable around them. Police officers just want to protect their community and make it safe. Sometimes policemen suffer because they don't get to see their families often because they have to work at night. Policemen, after doing their jobs, they volunteer to work more and go read to each classroom in each, in each school. Once in a while, they teach there. There is a program that teaches you all about violence, drugs, alcohol, and tobacco and how it can affect your body and other people's bodies too. There also gives example of teenagers that have used drugs or drank alcohol and everything is bad to them because they are already addicted to drugs and others. Officers also help you when you, your car is in the middle of the highway. They come and help you get your car to the side so nothing happens to you. And that's how you can see that are looking after your safety. Thanks a lot, policemen and women, for, for volunteering to teach there and to read for us. I appreciate a lot of your work, and I appreciate Officer Bacall for teaching us there. And I thank the other policemen for volunteering and doing activities with us. Thank you so much for everything. Feel proud of yourself because you only want our safety. Damien Wesby, please. Police make our community safe. They let children know that they can trust them. They are willing to risk their lives for the citizens. They go through years of training to protect our community. They keep all people safe no matter what. Police officers sacrifice family, friends, or even their lives for hours. Their families never know if they will come home or not. Officers keep schools, houses, cities safe. They will do anything to keep us safe no matter what it is or how hard it can be. On behalf of Ardmore School, our communities, and our families, we thank you, we thank you for all you have done and continue to do for us. For our next presentation, I'd like to introduce Deputy Deanna Merrill with the McHenry County Sheriff's Office. Good morning. For all those you don't know, Deputy Manus. Deputy Dwight Manus was with our department in approximately 16 months ago. Um, responded to a check for well-being call with two of our other officers and was ambushed. Eight months ago, he succumbed to his injuries. Deputy Dwight Manus served in the United States Army as an Airborne Army Ranger for 20 years. Not long after he retired from the military, he made his way back home to Chicago and he became a member of the McHenry County Sheriff's Office. Dwight was an incredible asset to our department, and he served his community with pride. Dwight lived and breathed the Army values, and he continued to do so while serving with our agency. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage were Dwight's core values. Dwight was a man others aspired to be and was passionate about the work and the quality of work he provided. Dwight had many strengths, of which included tactical expertise, along with his desire to train others. He spoke intensely of educating others and making a difference. And when he spoke of these things, he spoke with such passion, he would appear angry. And as a result, his colleagues affectionately nicknamed him the Angry Ranger. 
Dwight was a humble man. He genuinely cared about others. And during the 11 months he worked to recover from his gunshot wounds, he believed everyone could learn something from this horrific event. He wanted this experience to better others. Dwight wanted this experience, or he believed, I believe he is watching over from above, begging that we practice those tactics that he taught us, and that we take care of each other and let his death stand for something. God bless all of you, and thank you for honoring him on behalf of my department. For our next presentation, I'd like to introduce Officer Omar Bracall. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Within the same spirit that our fifth graders completed their essays, uh, we also had uh, two students representing fourth grade with uh, posters that they completed. And uh, these two very special individuals were chosen by staff members from their school, St. Philip the Apostle. So uh, these are the best of the best. They were chosen for a reason. And I'm going to call on the first student uh, representing fourth grade, and that is Drea de Alessandro. Please come on up. Good morning, Drea. How are you? Good. Good. You good? <laughs> okay. All right, so this is her poster, and I'm going to just be asking some questions so she could explain some things for you, okay? So what are uh, these right here? What, what um, are you put there? Sorry. They are police badges, and this is a sheriff badge. This is a special agent, and this is a police officer badge. Okay. This, this car looks familiar, right? What is that? Um, police officers use them. Um, they patrol the area. And not only is it a squad car, but she researched. That's an Addison Police Department car. So yeah. She <laughs> cut and pasted. She went on her website, so it showed some dedication there. And can you read some of the things that you uh, put on? Uh, yeah. A police officer is your friend. A police officer visits our class at St. Philip the Apostle School. The officer teaches us about right and wrongs and what to do if we are afraid. Police officers are here to care for the community and keep us safe. Call 911 for emergencies. Don't talk to strangers and be aware of your surroundings. Don't follow, be a leader. No, I especially like that part because um, it's important to be a leader. Mm -hmm. um, do you agree? Uh, yes. Yeah? Okay, can you uh, tell the audience some um, characteristics maybe of what a leader can um, be? Yeah. Um, leaders never give up and uh, they help people make good decisions. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, As a token of our gratitude and the hard work that you put in here, Director Hayden would like to uh, present you with a gift. Boyd, you deserve this. That was an excellent job there. Thank you. All right, good job. <laughs> Thank you, once again. Um, our second poster was completed by Damian Natupski, also from uh, St. Philip the Apostle School. Please come on up. It's a good thing I work out so I can hold this poster up. Here, why don't you back up just a little bit, okay? There you go, so you can talk into that. All right. Ooh. So, why don't, you, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and explain some of the, uh, the pictures that you have here and some of the captions that you wrote down here. Over there you can see that, um, that police officer is teaching other children about safety and like rules. And on, over there in that purple picture, um, police officers also keep order and help safety during events and games and different concerts. Uh, like cup game, Cubs games, uh, baseball games, different games, and on White the bottom. White Sox games too. Yeah. White Sox games. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> on the bottom side, there is uh, like two horses, and police officers are riding them. Police officers patrol parks to keep people safe. And over here in the middle, you can see like 
police officers ride on motorcycles and they like track different people um, like driving, how much they're driving, how fast to keep people safe. And then like in severe weathers, they uh, help, help keep traffic. And on the bottom you could see police officers also assist during uh, car accidents. Uh, and then they like control traffic so um, nothing more happens. And over here, um, dogs help like track thieves. Police officers help find criminals to keep our city safe. Thank you, police officers. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Another excellent job. You guys are really detailed. And we thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good job, buddy. Thank you, Mike. The Addison Police Department would be more than proud to have these displayed in our police department lobby. Um, at least throughout the next month and you know maybe into the summer as well. So um, just be happy to know that you know we're proud of it, and uh, we're extremely happy that you guys agreed uh, to do it. And um, very good work, obviously, very good work. Thank you. Uh, may I call once again Director Hayden for our next uh, presentation? Thanks, Omar. Trying to find my place in the program here. Okay, what I'd like to do is uh, call on the uh, retired Addison police personnel um, to please rise and be recognized. All the former Addison police personnel, I see some, Dean, um, looking around the room, Bob Tyndall, Annette, Kathy, Larry, well, Mel, Mac, Mark, Mike, Larry, so quite a few um, retired, uh, Bill. You haven't seen Bill in a few years there. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it feels good that our former employees, uh, retired and former employees, uh, come by and uh, participate in this exercise with us. And I know I'm missing a few um, uh, employees. Don Summers is back there. I see some of them, you know, cops are still the same. They sit in back, and I'm sure there's a lot of them that haven't stood up to be recognized. So for all of you that, uh, that did return, thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. What we're going to do uh, next is we're going to honor the names of the uh, former Addison police personnel um, who have uh, since passed on. We always like to recognize them also during our annual ceremony. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, call on Mike Simo to begin, followed by Larry Stoll, Mark Van Stettem, and Alma Monroy. Sergeant Ralph Carcello, Sergeant William Devaney, Sergeant William Fairhiley, Dispatcher Marge Foster. Commander Rick Ferraro, Officer Ken Feeney, Director Marilyn Gensner, and Officer Mike Keegan. Officer Dennis King, Officer Richard Kopeck, Sergeant Heinz Kruzikowski, and Chief Victor Moal. Chief Emo Novotny, Officer Ron Abjetka, Sergeant Bill Ravy, and Sergeant John Toshin. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Kathy Bernard. Uh, she is going to celebrate this, uh, the life of her son, Officer Bernard. Kathy, thank you. 
Thank you all for having me, and I really want to say my congratulations to you students. With your input, I can see that there will be a change in the police climate that we all know needs to be done with young people like you, so hats off to all of you. I just got home last night, I flew in last night from National Police Week. Uh, the week before that I was at Springfield and I gave the survivor's prayer at the cathedral there at the memorial. And the week before that I was in Cincinnati, Ohio, participating in what they call traumas in law enforcement. And while I was there it really kind of opened a side of me that I had put back, I guess. It's been over 39 years before my first law enforcement death. You see, my first husband was shot and killed while off duty. And not just the death, but the circumstances were almost more than, than I could handle. But I realized that I had a joy of having two children to raise, and that's what kept me going through those next 27 years. I had a daughter, eight and a half year old Stacy, and Patrick, who was three. And they kept me going. Even though I brought a new dad into the mix, the three of us were still tight. When I was diagnosed with cancer and told that I probably wouldn't make it two years, the relationship that developed between the three of us was overwhelming. In fact, I can remember an episode between my second and third surgery where my son, who was uh, 16 and driving me everywhere, um, my favorite singer, Sammy Hagar, came on the radio. Pat flipped up the sound and I sang only one way to rock with all the ability that I have. When the song was done, he turned it down and I said, you don't suppose. But as old two people that knew each other very well, he finished my sentence. He said, you can't sing now and no amount of surgery will help you. That kind of humor is what got me through one of the most physical damaging things I've ever happened in my life. Um, he, he kept me going when I had trouble speaking, when I lost my voice, all these various things that happened and he and I became even closer. As a young man, he was in the band, uh, played the drums, and when I cleaned out his locker at the police station after Pat was gone, I found his papers that he was filling out to become a, a member of the Emerald Society so we could continue playing those drums. Um, when he was in school, he had as many girlfriends as you can imagine, but his grades were indicative of the girlfriend he was with. When he dated the superintendent's daughter, he even made honor roll. He was prom king, homecoming king, he had a great life, but none of that meant anything to him but playing football and the fact that Patrick was captain of the football team for two years. I remember one game in particular when he didn't get to play because as a sophomore he was playing varsity and this was a JV game. But my sister was up from Alabama and I would like some pictures of my son so she let my son, the coach let my son play. And during the course of the game one of the freshmen got waylaid, big time. And out of the corner of my eye I saw a maroon and white flash coming who took care of that perpetrator. Uh, he left the game, Patrick did, but he kept with him that feeling of taking care of the young, serving and protecting. He learned maybe not to use such a heavy hand, but he carried all that forward to become a police officer. And probably the worst day of my life was Thanksgiving Day 2004 when a member of the law enforcement community came to my door and said, your son has been killed. Patrick was on his way home for the first Thanksgiving in the seven years he'd been a police officer. We'd never had got to spend that day with him and we were all looking forward to it. It turned icy and I called him that night and I said, why don't you just stay put? And Pat goes, no, he, he really wanted to come home and see his family. And on 55, on his way home, at mile marker 171, there was an accident. And Patrick pulled off and did what he did every, every day. He thought of himself a police officer 24-7, introduced himself to the family, and said, I'll get you out of here. Well, he wasn't able to get them out of there. A hit and run driver hit Patrick and Frederick Davis, the man he was helping, and left my son to die alone on the highway. My life has changed since then immensely.
but not the way it did when his dad died. I didn't have these two kids to fall back on to, to help me through my life. But I realized I had a new family. They were my family in blue, who had been there and had taken care of me and all the times that I've needed somebody. And much like when my son died, I mean, my parent, husband died, when my son died, my friends and a lot of my family avoided me. They stayed away from me because they didn't know what to say to me or they didn't want what happened to me to happen to them. But I found a new family. It's called Concerns of Police Survivors. Those are people that have lost an officer in the line of duty. And they go out and they help you. I'm allowed to talk about my son without being embarrassed. I'm allowed to cry if that's what I feel like doing. They're there for me. And when I look around this room, I see so many officers. And I want you to think of one thing. Out there, there's someone that cares a great deal about you. So I want you to take care of yourselves every day. And God forbid any one of you has a horrible thing happen and you don't come home that night. Know that I, or a member of our organization, Concerns as Police Survivors, will be there for your family and do everything we can to lift them up from the despair that they're in. I ask you all to be safe and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, we're at that point in the program now where I'm going to ask Pastor uh, Bob to return for a closing prayer. You know what? I made a mistake. I need to do one thing uh, before you do that. You could stay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Deanna and Kathy, would you please come forward? Sarge, Sergeant Ellis, would you please come forward? These were on the second, self sh second shelf of the podium, so I, I didn't see them down there. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to present you uh, when you concluded uh, with our uh, department challenge coin. Thank you. Kathy, I wanted to present that to you. And Deanna, Sergeant Ellis, thank you very much. Pastor Bob. Over the past couple years, um, about four years now, I've had the opportunity to do a lot of ride-alongs. with the officers. Got to know them. Got to know their families. About two years ago, our church decided to do something special. We are a church here in the village of Addison. We have taught our people to love and respect the police officers. So what our church decided to do was raise enough money to have a special Sunday morning. And we invited the officers and their families to the church. We honored them with a banquet. And then for each of the officers, we bought them a police edition Bible. On the Bible, we had their name engraved with their badge number. On a monthly basis, I try to give a devotion to encourage them. Like I said, I've been able to ride with just about all the police officers. I've talked with uh, all of them, and it's been a great honor to see the struggles they go through. Because once you get in the car and start to realize these officers are pretty special people. They have to be professional when they come, and they have to leave their troubles at the door. 
and become family members once again. It's a hard transition to make every day. To see your support, I know they appreciate it, and I appreciate it. What I did, and I want to conclude with this, I wrote a prayer. And in the front of each Bible, I place this prayer. And that is the prayer I want to conclude with. I usually do not read prayers, but I wanted to read the prayer that I wrote for the police officers of the Addison Police Department. Dear Heavenly Father, as these officers go on duty, help them to ever be mindful of the responsibilities entrusted to them by the public, that they may perform their duties with integrity and impartiality. Give them the bravery they need to protect the weak and the helpless. Inspire them to show compassion on those who are hurt and afraid. Help them to deal with evil evildoers firmly but respectfully. Dear God, please protect each and every officer as they carry out their duty. May they feel your presence as they go to serve and protect. May you bring them home safely to their families at the end of their shift, and that they will be able to make the transition from police officer to family member once again. Dear God, please bless and protect each officer of the Edison Police Department. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bob. We appreciate that very much, very much. Color Guard, retrieve colors. Color Guard, attention, hoof, shoulder, arm. Forward, mark. Color Guard, halt, retrieve. Mark time, mark, counter, mark. Shoulder, arm.
Ladies and gentlemen, um, at this time that concludes the service. Um, on behalf of Mayor Vanstra, Village Manager Joe Block, Village Clerk Lucille Zaccaro, the entire Village Board, the men and women of the Addison Police Department, and the Village employees, we thank you very much uh, for attending this morning. We thank you very, very much for supporting law enforcement. Thank you. Have a good day.